Good afternoon, SaaS spiders. <laughs> if that's really a word I should use for everyone. Um, hi, I'm Micah. Um, this is SaaS Bites, um, episode 11. Uh, we're airing on Thursday, October 17th. So thanks for joining us. Um, again, uh, SaaS Bites is a weekly uh, video podcast, uh, usually about 20 minutes long, covering just a quick little snippet of uh, fun SaaS, a little... Um, uh, SAS during your lunch break, a bite of SAS during your lunch break. Um, you can follow me um, at Micah Godbolt on Twitter um, and at SAS Bytes uh, if you want to get direct access to this feed. You can also follow um, or catch up on past episodes um, at SAS Bytes, or sorry, twitter.com slash SAS uh, There's also a Google Plus page. These all get posted to that as well since it is a um, an on-air, uh, Google on-air thing. So anyway, what we're going to be doing today is we are going to be um, kind of breaking away from the stuff we've been doing in the past and diving directly into kind of an application. So um, less about SaaS, more an application of what you can use it for. So um, I'm going to show off a little bit of code. Um, and also, I'm going to take an opportunity to show off uh, the new SaaS Meister. Um, if you haven't been to SaaS Meister recently, um, they have went to version 2.0, I believe they're calling it. <clears throat> And uh, in 2.0, you can not only have um, CSS and CSS, you can also have HTML. So um, it's perfect for this use case because I'm going to show off um, some, um, some HTML. Uh, so let me give you a little bit of the background of the story. Um, this right down here, this little box, and you can see this little divot down at the bottom. Um, this was a little UI element that um, was given to me in a mock just a little while ago. And I was like, oh. Okay, how am I going to create that? Certainly don't want to use an image. Um, you know, don't want to load additional assets or anything like that. And I can do that with CSS, right? So, uh, yeah, it worked out a couple ways. Um, this is actually um, heralded back to something I saw Chris Coyer do a while ago um, when doing um, actual like, tabs, like manila envelope tabs. Um, and basically what, what we're doing is we're, we're going to be using, um, uh, using circles to punch out this area. So there's a circle on the left, circle on the right, two different pseudo elements um, that create that. So um, let me just walk through the code real quick, and then we're going to look at what we can do to make this even better. So um, we've got a box. That's our just our black box with arrow down below it. Um, unfortunately, it does require an additional element. Never a huge fan of that, but you need to have a box and you need to have the two um, pseudo element circles. So life goes on. Um, so we've got uh, just a standard background to match uh, the background of the box. Position absolute, and then we're going to move it down 15 pixels because that's the height of the box. That's the height of this little curve thing. We're going to move it left 50%, which moves it the left edge of it 50% over, which doesn't get it centered because the left edge is at 50%. So we're going to use the translate x, pull it back 50%, uh, and then we, we're going to pass in just a regular height and width. And then here's our little circles, our little white circles. Um, content, just blank, background white because we want to match that background. Um, obviously, we need to make sure that background is actually white. Um, it has a width and a height, a border radius, just blown it out. It's 100%. It's full circle. Uh, position absolute and top of zero. Um, so it, and that's relative um, to the, um, the, the arrow container. So it's going to go right to the top of where that is. Uh, and then we're going to take the first, the, first uh, the before pseudo element, move it left, take the after pseudo element, move it right 50%, um, and when we do that, we get this. So this used to be a box, but then there's two pseudo elements in here that basically cut that out. So that's cool in itself, that's just CSS, um, but we can do a whole lot better than just this, because at this point, it's a lot of code. I mean, this is you know a good 30 lines of code, 20, 30 lines of code to make this arrow, and there's a lot of magic numbers in there, numbers that, that work because they have to work to make that instance of this arrow function. So if I was to change a number, things would break unless I knew how to change them properly. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how we can do this um, with instead of um, just a straight up CSS, let's turn this into a function, or let's turn this into a mixin. So as you can see, we've got mixin rounded arrow up here that we're going to call down at the bottom. So arrow, include rounded arrow. And we're going to pass in three different things. We're going to pass in a background color. So we know um, what background to match the element. Um, I could probably do another background for the, for the white. I realize I didn't put that in. 
so you probably have more of more stuff. Um, anyway, so we have a background, so that's going to be black to make sure it matches the box it's next to, and then a height and a width. And those, that's all that we're going to need to pass into it right now. Because what we're going to do is then we're going to use all of those to propagate the rest of this, um, this rounded arrow mix-in. So our background is background. Uh, so that'll just match the black that that box is. Position's not going to change, but that bottom's going to change depending on how tall that arrow is. So we need to make sure to account for that. And you can see we can just throw a negative right in front of a variable, and that height becomes negative height. So if you throw in 20 pixels, it becomes negative 20 pixels. Works perfect. Uh, left 50% uh, and translate don't need to change. The height and the width, obviously, we need to be the height and the width. So that works. Um, this background, as I said, we could probably pull that out and be a different... Um, uh, to be another variable. I just didn't do that yet. Um, and then here for the width and the height of the circle. This is kind of an odd one. I didn't get a chance to really dive into the math of it. Uh, but these numbers were actually required for me to get it to, to really fit right, to have that circle be the right size that, um, you know, that it covered up all the box but not the parts I didn't want and, and whatnot. So um, I'd like to dive into the math a little bit more, but those work. And we'll see that number again here in a little bit. Border radius. Uh, position um, and top, those are all going to remain the same as well as the left and the right. So as you can see, we have the exact same layout. And you can see we can also go in here, we can just change our mix-in. Actually, let's do this. It's pretty nice little UI. We can even move our columns around. Yay, Sassmeister. All right. So if we want to have this a little bit different, we can toss a 4 in there. And you can see it hopefully update eventually. Hey, there we go. Um, so you can see we can change the height of it. Um, so if whatever numbers we throw in here, uh, I'm sure there's a number that'll break it eventually. <laughs> I'm going to test all the numbers. But hey, look, it's working. So the great thing about this is we've we figured out what all of those numbers do and what all those all the relationships need to be. So yeah, we're, we're throwing in pixel values. Uh, that life, life goes on. We could probably do this with M's as well. But... Um, but when you throw in a pixel value of a height, there's different numbers that are based on that height. There's different things that have to happen depending on that height. Um, so when you throw the height in, all of those get updated because of that mix-in. So instead of having to go through and, and you know adjust five or six different things to get it to work again, the advantage of this obviously is, you know, if the if the designer comes back to you and says, I don't really like how it looks. It needs to be a little taller. It needs to be a little wider. It needs to be a little skinnier. Whatever the case is, you can just go in there and update that mix-in and get exactly the uh, you know the look that you need to have. Um, as well as obviously the advantage here it too is when you want to use this multiple times in different places, you can do that and in different contexts that might need to be larger or smaller, those types of things. So one mix-in being able to create this element no matter where you go. So huge uh, um, advantages there. You obviously have a much smaller, um, uh, much smaller bit of code in, the, in your partials. And as well, when you make a change, when you actually um, like make a change and then commit this to Git, you're just changing one line. The, the, the resulting CSS is going to be different. Um, so your CSS diff might be larger. But all you're really changing is this one line in, in your SCSS. Which makes for uh, makes for less debugging, makes for smaller um, Git diffs, makes for less conflicts uh, and those types of things, uh, as well as it keeps you from making <laughs> math errors, which you know we all do. So <clears throat> that allows you to do uh, to get that into a mixer. Um, all right, looks like we don't have any specific questions kicking up yet. So let me jump into the third thing. We can get even more better because this is just a down arrow. This is just an arrow that points down. And the math that we use to create this arrow pointing down could be the exact same math that we can use to point the arrow in a different direction. And hopefully I got this all updated properly. Hey, hey, good. All right. Doing this late last night. I want to make sure I wasn't doing it wrong. All right. So what we can do is not only have this arrow pointing down, but we can also have it point to the right. Wait for it. Hey, good. This is the most updated code. I was afraid I had an old version. All right. So we can also have a point to the right. So you see with the exact same math uh, and exact same mix-in, uh, we can have an optional down. And you can see, actually, I made down the default. So if you don't pass anything in, it'll point down. But if you want to point to the right, you can also have a point to the right. And you can see the sizes are the same. 
Um, I wonder if I even switched those properly. So here we've got a really skinny one and a really uh, wide one. I might be able to flip those around so it's skinny both directions. Um, but just to show you real quick what I did with that, there might be a little bit more efficient way to do this, especially with uh, SAS 3.3. Uh, I was thinking there might be um, a couple different ways we could make this a little bit easier. But really all I'm doing is a couple conditional statements um, off this direction value. So we pass direction in, and if direction is down, we do one thing. We, do, we set the bottom as height. And if it's right, then we set the bottom as width. So you can see um, you know, then left 50% or top 50%. Uh, and then we change our, our translate to being x versus y. So we can just pass in different properties <clears throat> depending on what that direction is. Um, now, of course, we could probably also do direction left, uh, direction top, uh, or up, or whatever the case is um, for each of these. But as you see, there's, there's several of them. There's uh, some work changes that need to happen there um, as these, um, uh, uh, these multipliers need to change. Uh, as well as some of the directions of the um, the directions that the circles move and all that. So um, suffice to say, <clears throat> you can take this mix in and then you can also abstract it one step further in letting it have some some options, whether it's background colors, whether it's directions. Um, and the really nice thing about this is this is stuff you can you can continue to add on as you go. Um, so. Uh, you don't have to worry about getting this all done right at, at first. You can continue to add functionality to it, um, either going back to update your mixins or just creating things that are optional additions, um, and and you can go from there. So um, that that's really that really does it. Um, taking a pretty complex um, bit of functionality, a little bit of a UI element, and be able to turn that into a mixin, mixins that you can use over and over and over again, um, and then even make that mixing even more powerful in allowing you to pass things in like direction. Um, and you could, I'm sure you can imagine other things you can do with this like um, drop shadows, oh, drop shadow be nasty, maybe filters. Anyway, those kind of things where it's like what else could we do this and make it an even better mixin. Um, and those are, those will then turn into things that, or turn into mixin that all of those elements can then continue to use this new functionality. So um, I love mixins. I, I love the idea of being able to break this functionality out into a mixin rather than hiding it all inside of your style sheets um, where some get updated and some don't when you change things, then it turns out to a bit of, be a bit of a mess. So anyway, that is what we've got for today. So I um, really appreciate you stopping by. It was a nice short one. Um, and if you do have any questions, feel free to tweet at me, uh, Mike Godbolt, or at Sassbytes. Um, I tweeted out, as well as posted in this event, uh, the link to all this code. So if you uh, want to grab that code, it's on um, it's on GitHub in a gist, and you can play around with that yourself. Uh, just head over to Sassmeister or um, wherever you want to do it. Um, and again, thanks for coming by. Uh, one last quick note. Um, something exciting to say is that I was talking with uh, Chris Epstein uh, just earlier this week. He just got back from uh, SASConf, and uh, we ironed out that um, the beginning of November, whatever that first Thursday is, um, uh, the 7th, uh, he's actually going to be on the show with me uh, showing off uh, how uh, the new Compass is going to be using um, the Can I Use database to figure out which... Um, um, of the browser prefixes, that's where I'm going, which browser prefixes are going to be used uh, throughout everything. So, um, um, yeah, so, sorry, someone just pinged me on IRC. Pretty much always happens during this. So, anyway, looking forward to that, looking forward to having him on, and uh, we'll see you all then. Uh, if you're going to be out at CSS DevConf next week, I will see you there as well. So, thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you next week.